Welcome, curious minds, to a world of knowledge and discovery. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We're thrilled to have you here as we tackle C. Everett Coop. Charles Everett Coop, October 14, 1916, February 25, 2013, was an American pediatric surgeon and public health administrator who served as the 13th Surgeon General of the United States under President Ronald Reagan from 1982 to 1989. According to the Associated Press, Coop was the only Surgeon General to become a household name due to his frequent public presence around the HIV-AIDS crisis of the ERS. Coop was known for his work on tobacco use, AIDS, and abortion, and for his support of the rights of children with disabilities. As we embark on the next leg of our journey, let's unpack the layers of early life and education and examine its core elements. Coop was born in Brooklyn, New York, the only child of John Everett Coop, a banker and descendant of 17th Dutch settlers, and Helen Nopel Coop. He attended and graduated from Flatbush School. In 1937, he earned his Bachelor of Arts in Zoology degree from Dartmouth College, where he was given the nickname Chick occasionally used for his first name, Charles, but here an allusion to Chicken Coop. His interest in medicine followed a year in the hospital after a childhood skiing accident and brain hemorrhage. He earned his MD degree from Cornell Medical College in 1941 and Doctor of Science degree in medicine from the University of Pennsylvania in 1947. Brace yourselves for the next chapter where we'll be dissecting medical career. From 1946 to 1981. Coop was the surgeon-in-chief at the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia CHOP. Coop was able to establish the nation's first neonatal surgical intensive care unit there in 1956. He helped establish the biliariatresia program at CHOP when Japanese surgeon Morio Kase came to work with him in the ERS. He also established the Pediatric Surgery Fellowship Training Program at CHOP. During his tenure there he graduated 35 residents and 14 foreign fellows, many of whom went on to become professors of pediatric surgery, directors of divisions of pediatric surgery, and surgeons in chief of children's hospitals. Coop became a professor of pediatric surgery in 1959 and professor of pediatrics in 1971 at the University of Pennsylvania School of Medicine. While a surgeon in Philadelphia, Coop performed groundbreaking surgical procedures on conjoined twins, invented techniques which today are commonly used for infant surgery, and saved the lives of countless children who otherwise might have been allowed to die. He invented anesthetic and surgical techniques for small bodies and metabolisms and participated in the separation of several sets of conjoined twins whose condition other physicians at the time considered hopeless. He first gained international recognition in 1957 by the separation of two female Pigapigus infants conjoined at the pelvis and then, again, in 1974 by the separation of two Ischiopigus twins conjoined at the spine sharing a liver, colon, and parts of the intestines with their entire trunks merged. Coop was active in publishing articles in the medical literature. Coop later wrote that Coop helped rectify this by publishing his own findings and results. Additionally, he became the first editor of the Journal of Pediatric Surgery when it was founded in 1966. In contrast to his years as Surgeon General, when it was his policies and speeches that had bearing on other people, his years as an operating pediatric surgeon involved a more individualized, direct, hands-on effect on others. During the course of his long career, for example, he performed some 17,000 inguinal hernia repairs and over 7,000 orchidopexis surgery for correcting undescended testicle. He developed new procedures, such as the Cohen interposition graft for correcting esophageal atresia congenital lack of continuity of the esophagus or ventricular peritoneal shunts for treatment of hydrocephalus accumulation of excessive cerebral spinal fluid in and around the brain causing neurological problems. He also tackled many difficult cases ranging from childhood cancer to surgeries done on conjoined twins, of which he and his colleagues operated upon 10 pairs during his 35-year tenure. 
In all, he operated on many children and babies with congenital defects incompatible with life but amenable to surgical correction. In 1976, Coop wrote The Right to Live, The Right to Die, setting down his strong opposition to abortion and euthanasia. Coop also took some time off from his surgical practice to make a series of films with conservative Christian apologists Frank Schaeffer and his father Francis Schaeffer in 1978, entitled Whatever Happened to the Human Race, based on the book of the same title that was previously written by the elder Schaeffer. Frank Schaeffer and his associate, Jim Buck Fuhrer, provided a private, five-hour screening to U.S. Rep. Jack Kemp and wife Joanne on their home that, according to Frank Schaeffer's account of the late evening and early morning event in his book Crazy for God, led to both the Schaeffers and Coop obtaining access to everyone in the Republican Party. President Ronald Reagan, shortly after his first inauguration, appointed Coop Deputy Assistant Secretary for Health in February 1981. It was understood that Reagan would later nominate Coop to be Surgeon General. As we enter this new phase, let's analyze Surgeon General of the United States from different angles and evaluate its significance. As expected, Coop was nominated to be Surgeon General of the United States by Reagan later in 1981. Many liberal politicians and women's groups opposed the nomination because of Coop's very conservative views and strong anti-abortion beliefs. His nomination was confirmed by the U.S. Senate on November 16, 1981, by a vote of. He was sworn into office on January 21 the following year. As we enter this new chapter, let's navigate the complexities of abortion and unravel its multifaceted nature. Though Coop was opposed to abortion on personal and religious grounds, he declined to state that abortion procedures performed by qualified medical professionals posed a substantial health risk to the women whose pregnancies were being terminated, despite political pressure to endorse such a position. In the following section, we'll be immersing ourselves in the captivating world of Coop Report. Coop, an opponent of abortion, resisted pressure from the Reagan administration in 1987 to prepare a report stating that abortion was psychologically harmful to women. He said it was not a public health issue but a moral one. Coop assigned an assistant, George Walter, the task of researching the matter. Walter obtained a list of articles from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention CDC, authored mostly by CDC abortion surveillance staff, and consulted with Alan Gutmacher Institute personnel. Walter wrote a draft report on his findings and gave it to Coop. In a January 10, 1989 letter to Reagan, Coop said that there was insufficient evidence to substantiate issuing the finding desired by the administration. He also commented about how some of the president's advisers thought that it was a foregone conclusion that the negative health effects of abortion on women were so overwhelming that the evidence would force the reversal of Roe v. Wade. Coop did not present the draft report to Reagan and claimed he never approved it. In March 1989, the Coop report became public after it was subpoenaed and became part of a congressional subcommittee hearing. Although there were allegations that the report had not been released previously because it was biased, the document contained all arguments on both sides of the issue. Let's now shift gears and explore tobacco through a critical lens, uncovering its strengths and weaknesses. In his 1988 report of the Surgeon General, it was reported that nicotine has an addictiveness similar to that of heroin or cocaine. Coop's report was somewhat unexpected, especially by those who expected him to maintain the status quo in regard to his office's position on tobacco products. During his tenure, in 1984, Congress passed legislation providing for new, rotated health warning labels on cigarette packs and required advertising to include the labels. Those labels remain unchanged today. New labels containing graphic depictions of smoking caused illness and death have been announced by the FDA, but are on hold pending the outcome of tobacco industry legal challenges. Coop issued a challenge to Americans in 1984 to create a smoke-free society in the United States by the year 2000. As Surgeon General, 
he released eight reports on the health consequences of tobacco use, including the first report on the health consequences of involuntary tobacco smoke exposure. During Coop's tenure as Surgeon General, smoking rates in the United States declined significantly from 38% to 27%. As we enter this new phase, let's analyze AIDS from different angles and evaluate its significance. Coop was Surgeon General when public health authorities first began to take notice of AIDS. For his first four years in office, Coop, the nation's top health officer, was prevented from addressing this health crisis, for reasons he insisted were never fully clear to him but that were no doubt political. Coop wrote the official US policy on the disease and in 1988 he took unprecedented action in mailing AIDS information to every U.S. household. Gay activists and their supporters were unhappy with the way in which he targeted gay sex and the risk of infection through anal sexual intercourse as primary vectors of the disease, but Coop was unapologetic, claiming such activities entail risks several orders of magnitude greater than other means of transmission. Religious activists, upset over the pamphlet's frank discussion of sexual practices and advocacy of condom use, called for Coop's resignation. Coop also infuriated some former supporters by advocating sex education in schools, possibly as early as the third grade, including later instruction regarding the proper use of condoms to combat the spread of AIDS. While a straightforward telling to the public about the disease was controversial, Coop was also criticized by some health activists who claimed that his office had not gone far enough in attempting to develop a cure or vaccine, reducing the role of his office to educating the public on health concerns. In the upcoming portion, we'll be dissecting disability to gain a comprehensive understanding of its implications. In April 1982, a child born in Bloomington, Indiana, was diagnosed with Down syndrome as well as esophageal atresia with tracheoesophageal fistula. Six days later, after court involvement and parental discussion involving disagreement among physicians about whether or not to treat the baby or let him die, the baby died, having been denied surgical treatment to correct his esophageal atresia and tracheoesophageal fistula. Baby Doe, as he would be known, became a symbol for newborns with birth defects, children with disabilities, and the debate over infanticide. Coop was not initially involved with the baby doe case but had a special interest in it. As a pediatric surgeon in Philadelphia, he and his colleagues had operated on 475 such babies during his 35 years there, with ever-increasing survival rates. During his last eight years in active practice, Coop never lost a full-term baby upon whom he had operated to correct esophageal atresia. It was due to this background that he became actively involved in championing policies to protect the rights of newborns with disabilities, which led to Congress passing the Baby Doe Amendment. As we progress, let's shine a spotlight on style and examine its intricate interplay within our topic. These four issues combined with Coop's personality and his willingness to make use of mass media, brought to the office of Surgeon General a higher public profile than it previously had merited. He is, for instance, the first Surgeon General to have been the subject of a popular song promiscuous by Frank Zappa. He was interviewed by Ollie G for comedic effect. Coop was well known for his moustacheless beard and colourful bow ties. He was a Vice Admiral in the U.S. Public Health Service Commissioned Corps USPHSCC. During much of his day-to-day -day work, Coop wore the Surgeon General's USPHSCC uniform, a uniform similar to that of a Vice Admiral's in the U.S. Navy. During his tenure, he reinstated the daily wearing of the PHS uniform by the officers of the PHS. As we progress, let's zoom in on later career and examine its role in shaping our overall narrative. Following his career as Surgeon General, Coop was on the Firestorm Solutions Expert Council. Coop hosted a documentary series in 1991, simply titled Celsius. Everett Coop, medical doctor, it aired for six episodes on NBC. Coop and other investors established Coopum in 1997 during the dot-com bubble. 
this medical information website was one of the first major online sources of health information. Critical review of the site content revealed that many of the private care listings, medicinal recommendations, and medical trial referrals were paid advertisements. The company went bankrupt in 2001. Coop continued to endorse Life Alert bracelets for the elderly. In 1999, while testifying before Congress, Coop minimized concerns from health groups about the severity of allergies relating to the use of latex gloves. It was later discovered that a company that manufactured latex gloves had previously paid Coop $650,000 for consulting work. Coop held three professorships at Dartmouth Medical School, where he was also the senior scholar at the Celsius. Everett Coop Institute Get ready for an exciting exploration as we unravel the mysteries of personal life. In early 1968, Coop's son David was killed in a rock climbing accident on Cannon Mountain during his junior year at Dartmouth College. Coop later wrote that because of his son's death he thought, I might be better able to help parents of dying children, but for quite a while I felt less able, too emotionally involved. And from that time on, I could rarely discuss the death of a child without tears welling up into my eyes. Years later, he and his wife wrote a book called Sometimes Mountains Move to Help Others Who Had Lost a Child. Coop's Son Rev. Norman Coop attended Eastern Baptist College, now Eastern University, and graduated in 1969. The following year, the elder Coop was elected to the Board of Trustees, becoming the first non Baptist member of the board. In February 2007, Elizabeth Coop, his wife of nearly 70 years, died. On April 17, 2010, he married Cora Hogue, a former staff member of 10th Presbyterian Church in Philadelphia. Moving ahead, let's uncover the hidden gems within death and legacy and discover their significance. At a November 2010 news conference, Coop spoke from a wheelchair and said that he was very, very deaf and legally blind. Coop died on February 25, 2013, at the age of 96 at his home in Hanover, New Hampshire. According to a Coop aide, he had been ill for several months and had suffered kidney failure the previous week. No official determination of cause of death has yet been announced. Remarking on Coop's death, American Medical Association President Jeremy Lazarus commented, because of what he did, and the way he did it. He had a dramatic impact on public health. The Associated Press called his impact great, while the Philadelphia Inquirer called him a courageous and brilliant pediatric surgeon who pioneered techniques and became an outspoken surgeon general. Writing for The New Yorker, Michael Spector said, I don't think I have ever met anyone for whom I had more respect in this era during which progress, facts, and science are under unrelenting siege. It is thrilling to remember that even ideologues can love the truth. As we embark on the next leg of our journey, let's unpack the layers of in popular culture and examine its core elements. In The Simpsons Season 5, Episode 1 Homer's Barbershop Quartet, Coop is mentioned in the episode as the subject of a song sung by Homer's group. The Simpsons Season 12, Episode 16 by Binelli features Coop as a member of the audience in the final scene, where Lisa demonstrates her findings about bullies. In the future of a Season 4, Episode 16, 300 Big Boys, a brand of cigars known as Royal Cooperillo shows the likeness of Coop. Coop's likeness appears again in the Season 8 Episode 9, Fry and the Egg Man, as the head on Fry's Pez dispenser of heart attack medicine. In Season 3, Episode 17, The Boyfriend, Part I and Two of Seinfeld, Jerry likens Elaine to Celsius. Everett Coop, because she breaks up with Keith Hernandez for being a smoker. In The King of the Hill Season 1, Episode 6, Hank's a mentionable problem. Peggy watches an advertisement on TV featuring Celsius. Everett Coop. Later she dreams of Hank's funeral, in which Celsius. Everett Coop is giving the eulogy. In Season 9, Episode 3, Death Buys a Timeshare, Cotton asks Bill who he thinks is uglier, Hank's wife or Celsius. Everett Coop in Psych Season 2, Episode 7, If you're so smart, then why are you dead? 
the headmaster of a prestigious high school explains that Sean and Gus beat out Celsius. Everett Coop for the position of annual guest lecturer in which they taught a class on paranormal studies. According to the headmaster, was crushed he didn't get it. In Golden Girls Season 4, Episode 15 Valentine's Day. Our focus now turns towards and honours an important aspect of our discussion. Public Health Service Distinguished Service Medal Public Health Service Meritorious Service Medal Surgeon General's Medallion Surgeon General's Exemplary Service Medal Public Health Service Citation Medal Public Health Service Outstanding Unit Citation Presidential Medal of Freedom 1995 Public Health Service Foreign Duty Award Public Health Service Regular Corps Ribbon Legion de Homme 1980 Order of Merit of Duarte Sanchez and Mella, the highest award of the Dominican Republic Association of Military Surgeons of the United States with gold star Dennis Brown gold medal by the British Association of Pediatric Surgeons William East. Lad gold medal of the American Academy of Pediatrics Fellow of the American College of Surgeons FACS Royal College of Surgeons of England 1982 Royal College of Physicians and Surgeons of Glasgow 1987 Royal Society of Medicine 1997 Honorary Fellowship of the Royal College of Surgeons of Edinburgh Homfx 2009 US Senator John Hines Award for Greatest Public Service by an Elected or Appointed Official 1988 Jefferson Award Public Welfare Medal from the National Academy of Sciences 1990 Albert Schweitzer Prize for Humanitarianism 1991 Tyler Prize for Environmental Achievement 1991 Emmy Award in the News and Documentary Category for C. Everett Coop, M.D. A five-part series on health care reform 1991 The second annual Heinz Award in Public Policy 1996 Member of the American Academy of Arts and Sciences 1990 Member of the American Philosophical Society 1992 As we enter this new phase, let's analyze publications from different angles and evaluate its significance. Sometimes mountains move by Celsius. Everett Coop and Elizabeth Coop. Tyndall, 1974. Revised edition published by Zondervan in A Visible and Palpable Lesions in Children by Celsius. Everett Coop. Grun and Stratton, Earth Right to Live, The Right to Die by Celsius. Everett Coop. Tyndall, A Weight Ever Happened to the Human Race. By Francis A. Sheffer and Celsius. Everett Coop. F. H. Revail, 1979. Revised edition published by Crossway Books in Er Coop, The Memoirs of America's Family Doctor by Celsius. Everett Coop. Random House, A uh, Let's Talk, An Honest Conversation on Critical Issues, Abortion, Euthanasia, AIDS, Healthcare by Celsius. Everett Coop and G. Timothy Johnson. Zondervan, A Critical Issues in Global Health by Celsius. Everett Coop, Clarence East, Pearson, and M. Roy Schwartz, Jossie Bass, 2001. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications.